I'm known in my, my space in the ballet world as a disruptor. I have the moniker, the, the rogue, rogue ballerina. <laughs> I come from a space in which I was the only, you know, I was the only Filipina woman in New York City Ballet. I was the first Asian American woman to ever be promoted out of New York City Ballet's now 75 year history. Right. It took 75 years. Yeah, to yeah. see, a, to see a, an AAPI a, a woman step out of the court of ballet. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful for my father who immigrated from the Philippines. I, I am mixed. I am mixed and messy. <laughs> and I embrace, I embrace that privilege and the privilege that it allows me. Thank you for joining us on So Janelle TV. This is uh, your source of stories of immigration and representation. I'm your host, Janelle So, introducing you today to uh, Filipina Pride. She is the first Filipino to ever play a soloist part in the New York City Ballet. It's such a prestigious organization, and we have one, Georgina Pascogan, who is racing the Philippine flag. Hello, and welcome to So Janelle. Hi, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> we are going to talk about your uh, ballet journey, but before mm -hmm. that, for now, uh, we met because she is one of the producers of Here Lies Love. Wow. Tell me about your involvement. So how did you get involved um, and what has happened since? Um, well, first of all, I have to, I have to give a shout out to um, my friend and mentor, Diana Domena, who's one of the, the general managers on Here Lies Love. Um, she has been such a, a wonderful female presence in my life. You know, we'll get into it, but in the ballet world, women are generally pit against each other. And so she has been such a source of constant support for me. And uh, she originally wanted me to try out for the show. And I was like, I don't think that this is the right vehicle for me, but I do, like, this is so important. It falls in line with everything that I hold dear to my heart in terms of, and inclusivity in the dance world and the various um, initiatives that have started there, which we'll talk about, like um, Final Ball for Yellow Face. And then I elected to become a producer and yeah. raise a ridiculous amount of money <laughs> to bring this show to life on Broadway in the midst of my last season at New York City Ballet. Right. For Here Lies Love, how has it been since? So you're now wearing a producer's, right. producer's hat, you're raising the funds and right. then the opening and all that. How has it been? How are you liking it? I love it. I think it's 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 really wonderful to be able to flex this side of you know I'm a natural connector of people, and I am I'm so so passionate about this story. I am passionate about partnership, and I think that this this creative team of David Byrne, Fatboy Slim, Clint Ramos, Jose Antonio Vargas, Diana, all of everyone have been really just revolutionizing what Broadway is mm -hmm. and I'm known in my my space in the ballet world as a disruptor I have the moniker the, the rogue. rogue ballerina <laughs> and you know I think what's been really and really really touching and interesting is that I come from a space in which I was the only you know I was the only you know Filipina woman in New York City Ballet. I was the first Asian American woman to ever be promoted out of New York City Ballet's now 75 year history. Right. It took 75 years. Or uh, like, yeah, to yeah. see, a, to see a, an AAPI a, a woman step out of the court of ballet. Mm -hmm. And so to, to go from being the one to being part of a cohort and a binational cohort mm -hmm of producers, but then to see this amazing Filipina film talent every night on stage, absolutely crushing the show. I'm, I'm just beaming. You know, it's been 20 years of a dance career for me, so I'm happy to, to not be on the stage. Right, right. Eight shows a week, <laughs> I, I know what that feels like, and it's nice to have a little bit of reset, but I'm learning so much into other uh, stories that I would like to continue to tell, mm -hmm. and when I do make a return to the stage, how that's gonna, um, how I can be a part in the producing creative mm -hmm. side of that as well. Right. Learning the business from off stage this yeah. time, as you're taking a break from being on stage. Yeah. You never start a career thinking that you're going to have lasting impact. You mm -hmm. just like, I started dance because I fell in love with dance. Being forced to step into myself and understand what it means, oh, to be told like you don't fit the mold of what a ballerina is and then to find for myself that like, oh no, I'm gonna reclaim mm -hmm. 
everything that has been told to me that is a detriment to a possible career in, in dance, I'm gonna spin that into gold. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna make myself the rogue ballerina and embrace my differences, because that's what makes me special. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of, as the disruptor in the space of the ballet world, it only made sense to be like, why not, why wouldn't I be part of this history-making show on Broadway and redefine not only whose stories get to be told and who gets to tell those stories, but also who gets to share and profit share. I mean, there's like a whole other side of this that I don't think anyone's really talking about and how we are revolutionizing, you know, who gets to partake in the business side of Broadway. Mm -hmm. And that also needs a complete and utter revamp. Right, Broadway, ballet, similar in terms of stereotypes, yeah. similar in terms of barriers, similar in terms of limiting perspectives, um, but you crushed all those. We're going to be talking about that when we return on the show, Don't Go Away. Thank you for sharing your time with us here on So Janelle. Ito po ang inyong programa na naghahatid linggo-linggo ng mga istorya ng immigration and representation. This afternoon on the show, we are talking to the first uh, Asian-American female soloist in the New York City Ballet, and she happens to be Filipina, our Filipina pride, Georgina Pascogian. Georgina, from the producer, uh, let's backtrack a bit more. Yes. More, more, more years. <laughs> <Rewind. All right. laughs> um how did you start your ballet career? Well, I am one of six children. Oh. And so I also, I have been told that I was one that had the most energy running around. So I think at one point my mother was like, we must put her in something. And <laughs> we landed upon dance. Mm. And the second I got into the studio and started to learn this discipline of honing essentially every muscle in one's body, um, and realizing that it's, it's a beautiful art form that you get to be an artist but also uh, an elite athlete at the same time, I just was hooked. It's the place where you will really get to see who I am as a human being in a way that I, could, I can't always show to people in real life mm -hmm. and in this sort of interaction. How old were you when you started ballet? I was four. Four. And you know, some people, kids, they start ballet at that age, mm -hmm. but then after a while, um, the fascination either wears off or intensifies. Yes, I was when was an it? intensifier. Right. <laughs> when was it for you? Um, I, it was actually my first trip to New York. Mm -hmm. I think I was at around nine. Um, we traveled, we took the bus trip up in the middle of winter mm -hmm. and uh, we went to New York City Center and I saw San Francisco Ballet perform and I saw them perform this Jerome Robbins ballet called The Cage. Okay. And it's very interesting that we're talking about a lot of like powerful female like, themes in my life but this, this ballet is about female insects. Oh. And how they band together. And yeah, it's a really, it's a really spooky sort of like loosely narrative story, but mm -hmm. had a lot of feminine power in mm -hmm. it. And I just remember seeing this web on stage and being just immersed in this theatrical moment. And I was like, yep, whatever I need to do to get up there, I'm, I'm gonna be that. How old were you? Like nine. Nine. That was the moment where I was like, I have to shoot for this. Mm -hmm. I, I really want this to be a job. I knew how, it's like a needle in a haystack, right? Mm -hmm. Not everyone gets to live their dream as their job. Um, and fast forward a few years, I got a full scholarship to School of American Ballet, and I, I, I think it was my workshop performance. Mm -hmm. And I was in the midst of performing Brahms Schoenberg Quartet, and then I was offered an apprenticeship following that performance. And I, and that's really the moment, like I knew the real work was gonna start then, mm -hmm. but also it's like, oh, so they want to pay me to do it, right? Well. Right. And that's kind of very cool. That they, that jump from being like pre-professional to professional, anything I think is so, it's so wild and so special. I explain this a lot more in my book Swan Dive, mm -hmm. which I hope everyone. Maybe we should try to get a Philippines uh, publication. You should. <laughs> you should. You should have a reading. Yeah, there you, you should have some reading events, right? Manager right we'll here. talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> How did your parents react? Because I'm at that point where do I push my child? or do I not? And also Filipino parents are notorious <laughs> for not really supporting their kids who go into the arts. I have to say that my parents were 
so wonderful. You know, I'm like the middle child of six. And so like, I'm obviously I'm a performer. I couldn't be more craving of attention. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think they saw, they saw the talent in me before I recognized the talent in me oh. and my dancing and this, this performer. And so they always gently encouraged it. My dad, my dad and my mom, my mom was so supportive. Like she sewed my costumes Aww. and my dad only once ever when I was nervous, I didn't want to audition for School of American Ballet because none of my friends were auditioning. Mm -hmm. So I was going to skip it. Mm -hmm. And then he like very gently woke me up one Saturday morning and he drove me into Pittsburgh. I'm getting this And that basically that class started the trajectory of my eventual career in New York City Ballet. Mm -hmm. So, and it really like that kind of gentle, like, you should do this. Mm -hmm. But it was never like a sit down, talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, I still think my parents have a hard time wrapping their head around what that I've had a 20 year career. Mm -hmm. Them coming up to see my final performance this past May, it came full circle to how brief it is and to be able to have the, you know, ballet is so ephemeral just in its nature. Mm -hmm. Performance, performing art is ephemeral. That's why I feel like we should, we should be supporting all of our performing arts. Um, not only Broadway, but opera and ballet. Mm -hmm. and my dad is, and he recently came to see Here Lies Love all by himself. Uh, took the train, 81, and he was just like, I'm so, I'm so proud of what you've been able to um, continue to ask questions of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's something that's very unique to this journey I have as an artist is that I'm always going to ask questions. I've been very single-minded in the pursuit of a ballet career and it's, and that's why I talk about the double-edged sword mm -hmm. and that it requires so much focus and so much cutthroat uh, determination and competition that uh, my family life suffered for a long time. And I am filled with gratitude that they have stuck with me and not completely disowned me in my darkest moments. And I'm so thankful for my father who immigrated from the Philippines and not only assimilated to American culture, but to you know army culture and does not walk through the world passing the way that I do. You know, I, I, I am mixed. I'm mixed and messy. <laughs> and I embrace, I embrace that privilege and the privilege that it allows me. Mm -hmm. But I, it, it's just immense gratitude and I just, the prayer that they are able to see what the next chapter is mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just thankful. We'll be back with more Don't Go Away.